Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you all today. Thank you all for joining us today. It's really exciting and it's really great to see all those beautiful faces here with us. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for this very informative and very engaging webinar that we have here today. Um, before we get started here, folks, I want to just go through some quick housekeeping items as we normally do with these webinars that we host. Um, if folks could please keep your microphones muted, uh, unless you are planning to speak, you are planning to ask a question. With regards to questions, please make sure that you're including those in the chat box. We will have some time uh, during this session to address all your questions that you have um, for our panelists here today. Um, and then also, if you have the capacity to, please turn on those cameras. We want to create that classroom environment. We want to um, see folks engage, and we want to make this a welcoming environment for folks that are joining us today. So if you are able to, please turn on those cameras. Um, and with that, um, I want to welcome you all to this webinar focused on the 8A Business Development Program um, and certification, right? So we have some fantastic, insightful, um, and informative individuals joining us today. Um, we also have um, entrepreneurs as well, former alumni of our program, um, that will also be speaking on uh, these particular topics based on their own experience as well. Um, and so we're going to be talking about eligibility requirements. So we're going to be talking in depth with the 8A program, um, what the application process is like, resources, um, and just general ways in terms of obtaining opportunities in government contracting. And so with that, I want to go ahead and introduce um, first, our subject matter experts, we're going to start off with our subject matter experts, they're going to provide you all some information. Um, and then towards the end of the session, we're going to have a fireside chat, where we're going to bring in our entrepreneurs into the conversation. But first and foremost, I want to go ahead and start off by introducing um, our first guest speaker, <clears throat> Mr. Mark McComas. Uh, Mark has worked at the USA Small Business Administration, San Francisco District Office as a Business Opportunity Specialist in the 8A Business Development Program for nine years. Mark has also served as a Business Development Specialist with the U.S. Department of Commerce, Minority Business Development Agency. Mark holds a Level 2 Federal Contracting Certification and assists companies with federal contracts as well. Uh, Mark is also a specialist in all of the federal small business certifications. He served in the WOSB, Hub Zone, and 8A certification processing units. And Mark has been recognized nationally for his customer service and was also appointed to serve on the Strong City slash Strong Communities Executive Order during the Obama-Biden administration. Um, you all are really blessed to have this amazing gentleman here with us today. He has been very involved with our organization, and we're so excited to have you here, Mark. So thank you for taking the the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. Great. Thank you so much, Diego, and thank you to Elban for putting on this important event that really we hope that you, by investing your time, can educate you and provide you the resources uh, for you to possibly work with the federal government in contracting. And then a big part of our talk today is going to be on the actual certifications I'm going to have the links to all of our federal certifications because SBA does all of them, um, but we're going to focus on the 8A, but we're going to leave all our information so you can always follow up, and we're here for you um, because uh, we care at SBA that you get all the resources for you to be successful in federal contracting. Um, also, before we get started, I just want to send greetings uh, from our administrator, Isabel Guzman. Uh, many of you might know her. She was with the governor's office in small business. And then also from our regional administrator, uh, Elmi Bermejo. And so we want, we're here for you here in Northern California and, I, and also all over the country, uh, this audience is today. So with that, uh, should we bring on Mary Jo? I think we should, Mark. Great. Thank let's you. Go, let's go ahead and introduce here our other guest speaker, um, this amazing woman does a lot of amazing work with NorCal PTAC, Procurement Technical Assistance Center, but they are now formerly known as Apex Accelerator. Um, and so just to share a little bit about Mary Jo, uh, she has extensive contracting experience as a former contracting officer for the Department of the Navy. In her position as the deputy for small business, Mary Jo discovered her lasting passion of educating and helping small businesses to become successful in obtaining and performing in government contracting arena. She specializes in working with small businesses to help them understand and work through the maze of regulations and requirements in government contracting. 
Mary Jo is a connector of small businesses, agencies, and prime contractors, helping to establish relationships with benefits, which benefits all parties involved. Uh, she holds a BA from Evergreen State College, an MBA from City University, and has been working on the doctorate in business education at Argosy University. Um, folks, please welcome in Mary Jo Juarez and Mark McComas. Um, folks, I'll let you all take it away. Um, and if you all have any questions, again, please put those in the chat box. We will have time to address those. And then also we will be sharing uh, the recording, including uh, some additional resources and the slide deck concluding the session. Um, and so with that, uh, Mary Jo, take us home. Thank you. Can we go to the first slide, please? Yes, I will go ahead and share that now. And I am so thrilled to be here with all of you. I could not say this when I was working for the government because we couldn't say a lot of things, but I'm going to tell you all now that this is my very favorite program to work with. So I can answer any questions that you have and just share everything that I know. Okay, next slide, please. And next slide, please. And I'll have you keep going through our introductions. And okay, so. This is this disclosure is just to let you know that the information that we're giving you today is based on the information that we have today. One thing with the government is the information flows frequently, fast and furious, and sometimes things change. But this is current as of as of today. Next slide, please. So this is our agenda of the items that we're going to talk about today. And when I do these type of webinars, I like to leave you with at least two words to remember about what we're talking about today. And for the 8A program, my favorite words are prepare and commit. Because when you prepare, this program goes a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot simpler for you. It's a little bit difficult in the preparation, but having that, that baseline done and the pre preparation all together it's also gonna prepare you for the commitment that it's gonna to take to be successful here. And we'll talk about that in just, a minute, in just a moment here. The big thing to remember though, is that through this whole process, you are not alone. You have people like Mark and myself and other people who are here to help you and we'll keep emphasizing that throughout this webinar. Next slide, please. So these are the um, federal certifications. And I just wanna say one thing, even though we're addressing the 8A to certification today, one reason, the best reason to me to have a certification, let me give you an example. So in California, there might be 10,000 small businesses out there. There may only be 200 8A businesses. There may only be 20 hub zone businesses and on and on and on. So when the SBA allows a project to be set aside for certain categories of the socioeconomic small business categories, your competition goes from 10,000 down to 200. And that to me is the most important reason for the certifications in addition to all the networking and expansion and everything else. Mark, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, just uh, uh, real quickly on this is SBA does all four of the federal certifications now. We just took on the veteran certification. Um, and basically, we, we're going to have a lot of things in this slides. But the real important part that if you choose to uh, work at, with the federal government, <clears throat> the real work starts after you get certified. Contracts do not come automatically. There's a lot of work, but there are some tremendous advantages um, if you do good work, and we're here to be resources for you. Next slide, please. Thank you. So is your business ready? There's a reason for this, and we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, the SBA generally likes to have the business in place and up and working for about two years prior to applying for the 8A program. And the reason for that is because you can get all of the basic things for setting a business up together done and then have your time ready to devote to the 8A program. So 
these are items that we can help you with as far as your homework goes. For instance, what does a government buy? That's something that the Apex Accelerator excels in helping you figure out. Um, whether you have any contracting experience at all, cash, inventory, working capital, you need to be able to, to buy your supplies and pay your people and then invoice the government usually at the end of the month and wait for your money to come in. So you've got to have some capital working for you already there. Um, are you capable of fulfilling a government contract? We have a lot of classes. We have people to help you with that. And we can also help you with finding subcontracting opportunities. And Mark, did you want to add, add anything to this one or are we good to go? Great thoughts, next slide. Okay, next slide, please, thank you. So this program is a nine year program. And let me tell you one thing, nine years sounds like a long time when you're talking about it right now, but it goes by in a flash. And where you start here with your business and where at the end of nine years you're gonna end up, you're gonna be a completely different, not gonna be a completely different type of business, but you're gonna be in a completely different category. You're gonna know so many more people, you're gonna have um, all kinds of assistance helping you. You're just gonna end up completely different than where you began. And that's what this whole program is about, is, is moving you forward, moving you from here all the way to here. Okay. Next slide. Okay. What I've uh, done here, just right out of the gate, is you are going to receive a full slide deck and a recording of this. But what I've done is try to put myself in the shoes of you, the new applicant. I want to be mindful of you starting out and giving you the best resources and tools for you to be successful if you choose to go forward and make this investment. And it is. It's a big investment in your time. Um, initially starting off, you've got to get registered in SAM.gov. That's system forward management. And then the most one of the most important links in this slideshow is the next one. Before you start, I am asking you, please, to fully read the Code of Federal, Code of Federal Regulations. That's CFR. And it really tells you the specific guidelines of which you'll be approved. So again, I can't stress that enough because when you wanna to go to uh, coaching with Mary Jo or myself, we're gonna to refer to this and assume you've read it and um, you know what's in it. And then the next, I have direct hyper blue links to so many other sources. We've got trainings, videos, and frequently asked questions. Next slide, please. What else I've done just to be a value add here is I've put the direct hyperlinks for the HUBZone and WASB links, the CFR, which is Code of Federal Regulations. Again, these are direct blue hyperlinks to make it very easy for you to access this information. Next slide, please. Okay. Mary so jo? For eligibility, you have to be a small business and a small business and government regulations is defined by your NAICS codes. And Mark, you did an excellent job talking about NAICS codes. Do you mind talking about them for a few yeah. minutes? In, in the federal government, you're gonna find, we put everything in acronyms. So get ready, it's a new, almost a new language. NAICS stands for North American Industry Classification Code. And that's the six uh, number code of which of, of how you are identified. Also, you are already using the NAICS code because it's on your tax returns, and it's how the IRS uh, uh, designates or knows what kind of business you're in. Uh, and we'll, uh, that's, a, that's a whole nother class too. Uh, next, uh, excuse me, Mary Jo, continue, thank you. Yes, okay, so the um, 8A program is a one-time good deal. So the requirement is that you not have participated in the program before. Um, the 51% owned and controlled by US citizens who are socially and economically disadvantaged, Mark is gonna discuss that in our next slide. Um, and demonstrating the potential for success, um, such as having been in business for two years. And we do have a slide later on that will talk about waivers to that requirement that, that we'll go ahead and, 
and show you and explain situations where that does happen and some of the consequences of that happening, both good and bad also. So your benefits, your primary benefit, is this is an investment in your future. You're gonna have one-on-one -on -one business, a business counselor, business person um, with the SBA to talk to. You're gonna have the opportunity for federal contracting set aside and sole source awards. But as Mark mentioned earlier, these projects are not going to fall into your lap. Um, your competition will be limited. There is a lot of work that we can help you with that you're gonna to have to do in marketing and everything to have these sole source awards come to you. One um, client that I've been working with recently came to me and said, oh, Mary Jo, can you help me? I'm five years into the 8A program and nothing's happening. And I said, okay, um, let's talk about what you've done. And they said, well, we haven't done anything. And I said, okay, therein lies the problem. And so we started in the fifth year, what we should have started back in, in the first year with them. So that's why the mentors that we are, the, the assistance that we, we provide, we want you to be, we want you to be a success. That's super important to us. Yeah. Um, just Oh. oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mark. No, just to add to that, after if you are approved, it's a nine year term. And I am the business opportunity specialist for Northern California on the West side. And then we have a Sacramento office. Um, so it's really important that you uh, know that you are responsible for your business development. You've got to do the marketing, you've got to do the hard work. And then I'm here. And every year you'll uh, basically get revetted, and then I'm here to assist you with going through the bureaucracy and the paperwork. Um, so it's very hard work, and we're going to have two excellent uh, speakers later on who can share some of that with you. Next slide, please. Oh, oops! Just a minute. Can we go oh, back? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No problem at all. I just wanted to um, mention one thing about joint ventures. Um, you will have the opportunity to, to set up joint ventures, both with small and large businesses. Um, joint ventures are a class. Joint ventures and teaming is basically a class in itself. And we do have those classes for you to attend. You have to be very, be as protective of your business as you are with your children and grandchildren. Because I've seen many instances where large businesses will take advantage of a small business use them the small business will not gain anything from it and ends up in and ends up in trouble so we we do everything we can to to not let that happen by working with you um and you do have access to federal surplus property as well okay next slide um uh, quickly we have different groups that are uh eligible socially and economic disadvantage. I'm not gonna go through each one of these. You can see this on the slide. And after you read the CFR 13, please, uh, you're gonna be an expert. And so when I talk to you, uh, we're gonna have an incredible great conversation. Um, so this uh, slide is self-explanatory. Next slide, please. Um, also, you are going to be some thresholds you've got to adhere to. Uh, there's a personal net worth of $850,000. Now, that also includes that where you can uh, deduct the home value, your retirement funds, and the equity in your business. There are three-year averages of $400,000 or less. Uh, that's a good management problem to address. And then you can't have more than $6.5 million in assets. So that's pretty good, too. All right. So, um, and again, after you read the CFR, you're going to be able to, when I talk to you, I'm going to ask you what's your net worth. And so you're going to be able to tell me. So I look forward to that conversation. All right. Next slide, please. Okay. So Here, these, these are the items that we were kind of alluding to earlier that you need to have in place during that the SBA wants you to build up during the, the two years that you're in business where you get some technical expertise, where you have capital, where you have failures, and where you have successes. And you learn how to work through the failures to become a success. A couple years ago, the um, SBA was waiving this rule for IT companies because the government 
really wanted a lot needed i different it applications software different types of things so they waived this this rule for those companies and the results were were pretty astounding and and maybe almost expected some companies did really well and were able to build and continue building, but it was almost like they had to spend double time, you know, working with the 8A program, working with the current government contract, learning the language, learning all the rules, learning all the compliance and everything else, you know, kind of like a pig pen where everything's just flying all around you and it's all due right now. The majority of those businesses only ended up with that one government contract. And then a lot of the companies closed down because they didn't know how to go out and prepare a proposal for the next contract. They didn't have the capital. They didn't have that pyramid built on the bottom where they could go up and up and up and continue going up. So I guess that's that's one reason in a nutshell why the SBA has the two-year rule for, for you to, to experiment as a business before you go into this program. And Mark, did you have any thoughts yeah. on this? One? Real quick, if, if this comes up, you can have a side conversation um, and then we can address that and you'll write, a narr uh, you'll write an explanation. Next slide, please. If you could bring everything up for this slide. I... Thank you. I think we've we've kind of talked about all of these to some degree. Um, that last one, are you open to advice on growing your business? That one's, that one's kind of important because believe it or not, I run into a lot of people who, who aren't. And I'll talk to that. I'll talk yeah. about that in just a minute. Yeah. You, you'll find uh, uh, my favorite letter is C in government contracting. Not only do you have capacity, cash flow, capability, you have collaboration, you have commitment, you have uh, uh, equals contracts. So um, what you need to do is really look at these things and then um, we can talk about that and uh, decide if the 8A program is for you. Next slide, please. So Mark had talked briefly about identifying your NAICS codes. And one thing I'd like to add about NAICS codes, um, when you when you pick them out, you're not set in stone with the ones that you pick out. You can subtract and you can add NAICS codes. They're kind of like a living document through throughout your business uh, career as your business grows and expands. Um, registering with SAM, I will say that system for award management can be a little dicey every now and then because they're constantly upgrading it, but that's what your APEX accelerator is here for. Um, we are, um, we have reluctantly become experts in SAM and um, certainly there to help you out with any issues that you might um, you might experience. Um, the certify.sba.gov website where you will be actually loading your application in is my very favorite one to work with. They have all kinds of classes. They have lists of everything that you need to do. They have explanations. There's all kinds of assistance on there. You can certainly, Go to that website and just learn a lot by reading and, and, and watching YouTube videos and that type of thing before you apply. But this is where the pre preparation comes in again. If you follow the guides and the lists that they pull put together and you have all of your documents in an electronic folder, then you can sit down and you can just upload, upload, upload and fill that application out fairly quickly. Yeah. Real quick, the SAM.gov is the first step system for award management, and that's just the requirement because if you're not in SAM.gov, you contracting officers can't see you. So I like to say that SAM.gov is the registration is almost like your ticket into the stadium of federal contracting. When you get certified and start getting contracts, that's when you're on the field playing. Um, next slide, please. Okay. So um, these are these are some lessons that um, that the clients I worked with have have when I went out and asked them for some lessons learned. This is this is what they brought to me: getting your paperwork together and keeping it up to date. That's really important because the SBA is going to ask you to do reports, and it's so much easier 
to put all your reports together during live time than it is to go back at the end of the year and try and put everything together. It, it just takes so much time and you're going to miss things. Um, do your homework. We've talked about that. Ask questions. Never, ever be afraid to ask a question. And one thing that um, I advise our clients to do is when you're talking with somebody, your final question might be, is there anybody else that you can suggest that I can talk to that might have more information, that might have another connection, that might have awarded a sole source? You know, always, always kind of end a conversation with another question about, is there anyone else you can think of that I would talk to? And, you know, then thank them, thank them for giving that to you. Um, constantly building relationships um, is kind of self-explanatory. That's, that's going to absolutely happen. Watch and maintain your compliance obligations. And that has become even more important this year. I'm working with an 8A company that did their reports not in real time. So their information was inaccurate. And um, they did not pay attention to the percentage of private work versus the percentage of of um, government work, which changes, and I'll have Mark address that in just a minute, but it changes through throughout the program. And what happened is they were offered a $13 million sole source contract and the SBA said, no, they cannot have that because they're way too heavy on the government side and they haven't, they have zero um, private sector. So they, they lost that 13 million because of compliance obligations that they didn't pay attention to. Yes, you're, you're going to be required to uh, have uh, what I call commercial or industry contracts. But also, just so you know, when you are certified as an 8A and contracts come in, I signed for the contracts here in Northern California. And um, uh, the contract is actually the SBA contract, and you are the sub. So that's why you're vetted, have to be vetted. Okay. Um, you also have to show that you're in total control and yet you have the capability and capacity to fulfill government contracts. Next slide, please. Okay. Well, I just want to make a comment here. We got uh, an, about another 10 minutes here for some of the back slides that I'm going to go into. Uh, please write your questions in and Diego will address these. And what I want to do now is go into some market research. Um, and I'm going to lightly touch on these, but remember, I'm not going anywhere. Mary Jo is with the PTAC for counseling. We're here. Um, we care at SBA and the PTAC about your success. And so we're here to keep up the resources and training for you. Um, next slide, please, Diego. All right. Also, this audience is a national audience. I want to make sure all of you have access to your office all around the country. Uh, I'm uh, basically uh, headquartered in San Francisco, but I have a tr awesome, con uh, awesome colleagues around the country that are in my position that would love to assist you uh, in your with all your questions and services, and helping you with some maybe some networking and and marketing. Um, also, what I've put on here is our national resource guide. It's brand new this spring. Also, I want to acknowledge a. Uh, and Elban, a uh, uh, big supporter of Elban, Mark Madrid, uh, who's now with SBA. Um, he's in Washington, D.C., and he had a big part in putting this national guide together. Please go and, and push on the link and save that to your desktop. Also, SBA has a complete uh, um, uh, set of videos for you to view, and that's the Learning Center. Next slide, please. All right, um, this slide here is after you apply and you have all the blue hyperlinks for 8A, we, this is what we call our knowledge base. This has frequently asked questions. It has videos. It is a tremendous resource for you uh, to enhance your participation in the program. Next slide, please. All right, business development and self-marketing. Now, when you get 8A certified, some people think, think that your phone starts to ring. Maybe Miguel can address that when he, when he speaks. Uh, your phone does not start re ringing. So if you've heard that, 
that is a myth. The real work starts now, okay? I just want to be real full disclosure and honest with you. And that's where I've listed some resources. I don't need to go through them. These are things we all know that we've done for marketing. This is just reminders of getting out and networking, showing, uh, meeting people, talking to contracting officers, asking for capability briefings to where you can show you are the best solution provider for that contract. And now with COVID over, we're starting to have more events where you can really get out there and um, shake hands, network. And um, so you can pay attention to that. I've got some other resources coming up where I, I can share with you. Next slide, please. All right. These blue hyperlinks are very important. Put, please put a little star or maybe a big star next to these links. Um, federal procurement data system. You can actually go in and look at past contracts that have been done uh, by your competitors. And if you've done federal contracts, they're in too. So what you can do here also is find out when contracts are coming due. And maybe you might want to reach out to that contracting officer and maybe, you know, have a conversation. Maybe you might be able to step in for that contract. Dynamic small business search. This is SBA's platform that is a great, great resource for you to go and look at other companies that maybe you can market to, uh, possibly for subcontracting opportunities. If you're a new business, subcontracting is very important. Of course, you want to be the prime, but really through subcontracting is where you can gain experience. Uh, most federal agencies have forecasts that come up. They forecast. So you can go in and look at what's coming up for the contracts for that year. Another great uh, resource is what we call the OZABU. Again, another acronym, also Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization. Um, I spent many years in Washington, D.C., um, inside the Beltway. It is a different environment. And also, there is an advantage because I was able to literally go and be face-to-face -face with agencies and contracting officers when I was there. And OSDABU, we would have monthly meetings where all the small business specialists from all the agencies would come. And it's really a great networking to where uh, you can actually continue to find out what else is coming up. SAM.gov, System for Award Management. Not only is that the system you need to apply in first, but you can also get announcements on solicitations coming out, on events coming up. So please invest your time into learning that system. I also put on here, it's the formerly the Fed Biz Ops uh, for many of you that have been in the, in the business. GSA has all kinds of resources as well. And then another Acquisition Central. Next slide, please. All right more specific blue hyperlinks. Uh, for time factors here, I'm not gonna go in to each one of these. Uh, you can uh, invest your time. And what I would like to ask you to maybe please consider is give yourself one hour a week to just continue to go through these links and become familiar with them. Explore through the different websites and the links. And if you have any questions, call me, I'll, we'll, we'll have a team's call and I'll go through them with you to really maybe give you some coaching on what to look for. Um, I do want to draw specific attention to the last one, bid speed. Uh, our headquarters is really supportive of us with our 8A companies and we have what's called 7J training. Um, just real quick here, a little, fat, a little uh, knowledge piece, the 7J and 8A, came about, they are parts of the Small Business Act. And so if you wanna do some reading, you can Google that and read all about it. But 7J is where we put away money to buy, help marketing of our firms. And if you become certified with any of our certifications, you have access to the BidSpeed platform that typically costs two, $300 a month 
But if you are certified, you can receive this for free. And this is where you can also put in your NAIX codes and get um, emails on solicitations coming out. You can get one-on-one -on -one counseling um, with staff at BidSpeed. It's really a value add and a special privilege giving to the certified companies uh, that, that we have. Next slide, please, Diego. All right. Uh, we're coming in, hopefully right on time here. Lucia. <laughs> she made a, a good point of that. Um, again, I can't thank Lucia and Diego for their leadership on putting this together. Um, now, we have gone through a lot of information today, okay? Let's take a breath, okay? I hope you've taken some notes. And then if you, if you still uh, have some questions, uh, please send them to Diego, right? We'll answer them. Uh, well, we, we, you know, I've been around a couple of years. I, you know, I know a couple of things. We'll try to answer them for you. And um, also, I'm not going anywhere. And so right on the screen is my information. I'm a public servant. SBA uh, and the PTAC, a a Apex Accelerators is here to support you. Uh, we care about your uh, enhancing and growing your business if you choose to enter the federal government space. Okay, uh, next slide, please. All right. Oh, more, more great information. Listen, um, information is power. I know we've all heard that, right? But it's how you use that information. Please think about that. Please invest in yourself because it will pay dividends. Um, you're going to talk to some people uh, where... Um, you know, they'll tell you the real story. They have receipts of success. Um, we've got the SBA and the PTAC links. Please sign up as a client from the PTAC. I am so grateful for the counselors and the excellent staff and, and really my partners. are we're, we're partners in uh, small business success. Next slide, please, Diego. All right, that's it. Uh, okay. Now, uh, going to be question time, and uh, uh, back to you, Diego. How how did we do? Fantastic, right on schedule. Thank you so much, okay. uh, Mary Jo and Mark. <laughs> um, we do have a couple questions here um, in the chat here, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with um, Ricardo Franco. I don't understand the question, so if you want to just unmute and ask the question directly to our panelists, all right, um, and then Sounds we'll go. Good. Ahead. Great. Uh, yes, uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my question is basically, I'm in the middle of open uh, business for, uh, and I think I can qualify for, uh, have a contract with the government, but okay. the, I have a small business as a consultant company, and I have another partner that it has another business, and it has, in the two of us, both of us, we have more than three years. And I'm wondering, because this is going to be a partnership, it's going to be a new business, is that count for qualify into these uh, programs? Okay. Um, that is a great question. Now, the answer is what I'd like to do is um, really get a little more specific. So what I want to ask is, um, Ricardo, can you please send me an email? And what we can do is schedule a Teams meeting. And I'll give you some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, I have also worked in the 8A application side. So I've seen how uh, the best applications come in. And I can get specific when you say like three years. What we want to do also is make sure there's viability in the government of what you're doing. I can talk about a little market research and to see what would be best for you. So please send me a, a, a direct email uh, to myself and Mary Jo. And um, also, please, reg are you registered with the PTAC? No, not yet. Oh, you got to do that. I, this is the first time that I hear from you guys. <laughs> PTAC is the best. I'm also the president of the PTAC Apex Accelerators. So, okay. All right. I will yeah. do that. The Thanks. fan club. So, okay. Next question, Diego. All right. Uh, Miguel, if you want to go ahead and unmute, um, just so we can get the full context of the question. Miguel Avila. Ayala. All right. Hi, Miguel. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and skip Miguel. Um, if you come back on, Miguel, I'll, okay, great. Um, to ask the question, I'm going to go with Hassan. 
Um, Hassan asked, what is the capital cash flow or revenue that is required to be uh, qualified? Hassan, if you want to go ahead and unmute um, and give more context to the question. I, I tell you what, here's where um, a little more, a, a, another great question. Um, what we want to do is uh, maybe have a side talk on this one to where I can really, you know, look at your financials. I've looked at thousands of financials in my life and I can, uh, you know, uh, really uh, uh, say a lot with that. Um, and I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you to where we can talk about that and see what the best path is for you. Sound fair? Awesome. We'll go ahead and move on then. Don you, asked, how many NAICS codes are allowed if you if you have <laughs> multiple products to sell? Oh, uh, Mary Jo, you want to ask this after this one? As many as you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You okay. You can add them, you can subtract them. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I will just do a little value add here. Uh, yes. You can put as many as you want, but really when it gets down to it, um, over my years of the contracts I've signed for, the hundreds of millions of contracts, the companies typically are in a range of two, three, four NAX codes. Miguel, what do you think on that one? Yeah. Oh. On, on the ones that I use, I would say three and four are consistent. Yeah. Same as I use. I have over 20. Um, because there might be an off-ball uh, NACE code that somebody decided to put a procurement under. That yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and also just to add a little a pitch for the dynamic small business search, that's where you can list all of your NAX codes. Um, and, uh, but um, yeah, uh, so you, you, you'll find you'll do a majority of the work in, a, in two or three or four. All right. Thank you for that question. Miguel, go ahead. Uh, or think, Diego. Sorry. Yeah, we have one more question here. Okay. Um, folks, if you have, um, we do have a couple more minutes to take one or two more questions after. So if you have any questions, please include in the chat. Um, Pastores, Angel and Jason Rodriguez asks, where do you sign up for NAICSs? Um, well, if you can actually, as I mentioned in the start of the talk, um, your NAX code is the primary amount of work you do okay and also you can look on your tax return or ask your accountant because you've been assigned he's using or he or she is using a nax code as a irs identifier for the kind of work you do but also i want to give a little if you're taking notes or please take notes sba nax size standards that's where all of you can go in and even look at all of the other NAX codes um, that you can actually add uh, to your profile. Thank you for the question. Great. Um, any other questions here, folks? Um, I just wanna remind folks, um, if you all could please be clear and articulate with your questions, um, we want to make sure that we can understand the context of where you're coming from with the questions that you ask. So I just want to put a friendly reminder there um, with regards to questions. All righty. Is, is somebody asking for that again? The NAICS code, N-A-I-C-S, stands for North American Industry Classification System. Okay. And you can also get a list of those by Googling NAICS SBA size standards because the dollar volumes or employees for manufacturers is typically employees. Those are the uh, numbers that we use at the SBA to determine. And we determine the size standards. Another little uh, special feature about SBA is we also do the scorecard uh, in the federal government for all of the agencies contracting. So we're here to make sure that our set aside amounts, um, like for instance, 8A, 5% um, disadvantaged WASB and hub zone um, set aside requirements are met. Diego, any more questions? No, um, final call here for questions. If not, we will go ahead and move on um, with our panel. So going okay, on. We're right on time, okay. Listen, thank you again for uh, continuing to invest your time and um, be on this call. 
And again, there's a lot to take in. Um, one thing, things also change. So it's a continuing learning process as well. Okay. Um, all right. Listen, we uh, are really privileged today to have two incredible speakers. And what I want to do is maybe turn it back over to you, Diego and do introductions. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Mark. Um, as Mark said, um, you know, first and foremost, thank you, uh, Mark and Mary Jo, for providing that information and all those resources. Um, again, reminder, folks in the audience, you all will be getting um, access to those resources, the slide deck and the recording concluding this session. Um, but now at this time, I want to bring in the other side of the coin, right? The entrepreneur perspective. Um, and I have two amazing individuals uh, that are joining us today, um, two Elban alumni as well. Um, that are here with us spending time sharing their expertise and their knowledge with you all today. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and first start off by introducing Andrea Vigil. Um, Andrea Vigil is the CEO of Allegiant Electric LLC, founded in 2015, a certified women-owned small business, women business enterprise, minority business enterprise, disadvantaged business enterprise, and small business enterprise, as well as a Nevada local emerging small business firm. Um, so she has a lot of experience with certification and can prove it there. Um, and also she's based in Las Vegas, Nevada. Her firm specializes in electrical services, including solar battery storage and electric vehicle charging stations. Um, everybody, please help us welcome Andrea Vigil to the stage. Um, Andrea, thank you for taking the time to be here with us today and to share your knowledge and your expertise. Um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to Alban and Diego and um, SBA and PTAC and APEC slash APEX. I'm so excited to have this opportunity and I, I really appreciate it. Perfect. And then my next speaker that will be joining us today, um, this gentleman is um, you know, a person that has really given back to the Latino entrepreneur community. He went through our program as a participant and now serves as a mentor, continuing to provide his experience, knowledge to the next generation of entrepreneurs that are growing and scaling their companies. Um, folks, please help me welcome Miguel Galarza. Uh, Miguel is a highly experienced construction professional with over 44 years of expertise in overseeing multi-million dollar civil, environmental, wetlands, and IDIQ program management projects. Born and raised in San Francisco, he has played a pivotal role in estimating, negotiating, and managing projects, encompassing a wide range of construction divisions and specialties, including utility distribution systems, structural concrete, and environmental wetland restoration and construction. Mr. Garlarza is a licensed engineering contract in 11 states and hold a holds a Master of Construction Management from Louisiana State University. Recognized for his outstanding contributions to the construction industry, Mr. Galarza has been appointed to the public oversight boards, including the California Contractor State Licensing Board, the San Francisco Contracting Monitoring Division. He also serves as a chair of the LBE Advisory Committee and has been invited to testify before U.S. Congressional Representatives on the U.S. Small Business Committee in Washington, D.C., and the California Legislature in Sacramento, sharing his expertise on small business issues. Additionally, Mr. Galarza is an esteemed lecturer at San Francisco State, UC Berkeley Construction Management Executive Program, and an adjunct professor at City College of San Francisco. Folks, please help me welcome Mr. Miguel Galarza. Hey, Miguel, thank you for coming in and joining us today. Yes, thank you. Looking forward to sharing my knowledge. All right. All right. You, okay. You ready to kick it off, Miguel? Um, thank you so much uh, for what you've done for us at SBA too. Uh, Miguel has always been there for us during small business weeks to come in and uh, really talk about where the rubber meets the road in uh, federal contracting. He's uh, the top one of the top companies to ever come through the San Francisco 8A program and continues to give back, reach back. Thank you, Miguel. Today, Miguel, the uh, really, uh, as we've talked in the past is for our audience, what are some of the things that you remember when you were starting out? And maybe what are some of the things that the, today's Miguel would share with the new uh, 8A applicant um, and, and that it has made you so successful? Yeah, thank you, Mark. So uh, as, as a, a matter of, of record, I started working 
from my first 8A contractor. Uh, I, I was hired as a project manager back in 1990. Um, and it was a mechanical firm. And literally in the 80s and 90s, the phone did ring. And, um, and it was hectic. Uh, the phone would ring, we need, we need a contractor. And so that is not the case anymore. Back then there were maybe three or 400 8A contractors in California. And now there are thousands. So, and, and it's a different paradigm. In, in San Francisco, there used to be, you know, dozens of military facilities. There's none of that today. Uh, and so uh, if I were, if I were, if I were talking to you as, a, as an entrepreneur, these are some very critical things you need to understand and, and really do your market research. Who's your client? Who are you going to do business with? Who are the federal agencies that you want to specialize in? And where are they located? And do they buy what you sell? And um, because a, a, an agency, you, you may love doing work for an agency, but if they don't have any money, what's the point? Uh, and, and so um, what I learned over the years is marketing starts way before the job is advertised. Uh, by the time a job is advertised, it is way too late uh, if you're doing real business development. And then lastly, I would say, don't be in a rush to be 8A. Uh, the, it, those of you that are in the public works of building contractors, if you don't have bonding, if you don't have your CPA financials in order, if you're just starting out, and you get a contract and you can't bond it, you just can say goodbye to that contracting officer ever calling you again. So you need to be prepared. You need to have everything in order. And that takes years. That takes a couple of years yeah. to be able to say, I've got a million dollar body capacity. I've got all my things in order so that when you hit the ground, um, you can be successful. Thank you, Mark. Great. Miguel, thank you. Which would be a great uh, lead into our next question, Andrea. Um, and Andrea is also very successful and is preparing to get uh, apply to the 8A program. And with that, Andrea, what are the things you're doing for marketing and networking that you feel have made you most successful uh, to this point in preparation of getting your 8A certification? I think what's been um, essential to me is participating in the different programs. Um, I started, I completed the SBA Emerging Leaders Program. So that assisted me with regards to um, putting my three-year financial business plan in place. I took the class prior to COVID. So it was perfect because when it came time for me to apply for my PPP loans, all my financials were in order. I also completed the a Latino entrepreneurship program, which also helped me identify what they call as broken windows within my organization. I was privileged to have Miguel as my mentor. It was just coincidental that we were mm. both participating in this. Yeah. And so he's um, spent time with me and, you know, guided me in understanding the process, what's involved in um, getting everything in order before I'm actually able to go in and apply for the 8A certification, because I think there's I just need to do a lot more to make sure that I, I have a clear understanding of you know what we're doing, what we're ready to go after, and making sure I have all my licenses and bonding in place before I actually um, apply for a contract or the 8A certification on a contract. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Andrea, for our audience, talks about something very important there. And she mentioned, she talked about having a mentor, okay? Very, very important. If I go back for my many years, a uh, couple decades now being in this space with SBA, um, having a mentor to show you the way is so crucial, uh, which also brings me to the point. I just want to mention this. We have a mentor protege program at SBA um, that's online and processed out of headquarters. And uh, so, Andrew, I look forward to uh, watching you grow and your success. And there's a great team in Las Vegas at the SBA there for you. Um, Miguel, to you, 
what made you effective and how did you develop your relationships with contracting officers and federal agencies? And then maybe discuss too, maybe the ramp up period on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, for, for everyone who is on, uh, I just shared my LinkedIn profile. Feel free to connect with me, uh, reach out to me. I, and and I might, I'll do my best to, to guide you uh, with some questions you might have. But that being said, um, Mark, I, I came to a realization that uh, there are certain things that we do as business owners that can totally effectuate how successful we are in federal government. The first question I would ask everybody uh, honestly and candidly, do you know who your state, who your state congressman is? If you don't, you're behind the eight ball. If you don't know who your congressman is for where you live, that's a problem. If you don't know who your congressman is where your business is located, that's a problem. Why? There's something called the House Appropriations Act. If you want to do real reconnaissance and real competitive intelligence, you have to be drilling into where the money is going. Where is it coming from? It comes from Congress. Congress decides who gets the money. And once you know where the money's going, then you can ask your representatives, what do we have coming into our district? At that point, now you can start to do the real marketing that puts you in front as an 8A contractor. So if you don't know who these people are, they're your representatives, they're your elected officials. They have somebody who knows what is the house appropriations for your Very good yeah if you're not doing that you're not ready to play in the big boys uh in the big leagues you need to know what that is before you even step into the batter's plate miguel thank you so much um that is uh it just comes with again investing your time with who knows who and also you know uh, people tell me also where they maybe call people and no one calls them back. You also got to stay what I like to call professionally persistent. Okay. And stay there. Try to find out if one of your agencies is going to be at an event, get out to that. Also maybe go as Miguel talked, maybe get out to some uh, events where your elected officials are. It's always nice to know people. Again, I don't really talk about that, but um, uh, uh, very good points, Miguel. Thank you so much. Andrea, um, how about uh, maybe share with our audience some of the events that you've done that you've gotten out to and really helped you get exposure uh, with your networking? I think, um, again, with the SBA, they have different alumni events. And through the Emerging Leaders Program, we created like a CEO group. So our my CEO group and I, we still refer work back and forth to one another. We still talk to each other. And we still, you know, especially during when COVID happened, we started exchanging information with each other on how we could continue to encourage each other or continue, you know, keeping our businesses open. I'm, I also was participating in BNI, um, SBOP, which is a Clark County um, program, UNLV Cox program. I'm a student. My mom told me if I continue going to school, I don't have to cook. So any class that's out there, I'm in it. So anything that they tell me, um, I was actually nominated to participate in the Hope by National program. So I just had the opportunity about a month ago to go to Washington, D.C., sit with a group of amazing women and just really get to um, meet the um, ambassadors and just a whole network of people. And, you know, the SBA, we talk about our SBA, my local SBA group, they're amazing. Christina, Barry, um, Darwin, and Saul, during COVID, they answered my phone calls. You know, they've just championed me all the way to the White House. I've been to the White House twice. I was invited to um, a round table with the Vice President of the United States with five other companies. And we were able to sit there and actually give, you know, talk directly one-on-one. -on -one. It was intimidating, let me tell you that. And then we had another opportunity to attend the White House for a second time 
So I'm really excited, you know, and I really love Washington. So if they want to keep inviting me, I'll keep going back. <laughs> Thank you. Though. Wow. I tell you what, that's impressive. I'm, I'm, I want to, I want to stay in touch with you. Follow. Maybe, maybe I can get invited too. So, <laughs> okay, Miguel, we are, we are really getting some uh, good advice and wisdom today. And these, this um, knowledge is so good for all of us. Um, Miguel, uh, what, how did you decide on what certifications you should pursue and how did you take advantage of that in your uh, success at Yerba Buena? So, you know, those of you that are, are starting businesses or those of you developing a business, you know, one certification builds off another. So what I would recommend is, you know, DGS with the state of California, if for those of you that are in California, this is a very easy certification to get and easy to fill out. It takes a couple of days and you're done, okay? And not a whole lot of background uh, information needed. Uh, but then you start getting into your DBE certification, which is a federal certification, this Spanish business enterprise. And it's a little bit more paperwork, but an excellent one. Once you get those done, some of the other local certifications become very easy. There's a reciprocity agreement with certain agencies that if you have the DBE certification, um, which is a DOT, Department of Transportation certification, you will automatically get, your, get that reciprocity for some other state or local um, certification. So I would look to see which one has the most reciprocity. And what I mean by that is, if you do this certification, you get certified everywhere. So do one, take advantage of those reciprocity agreements. And then that way you uh, don't have to do 20 individual ones. And that would be my recommendation to you. Miguel, that's excellent. That's excellent uh, information. I, I just, when, when I listen to you talk, I think about the years of knowing you and sometimes I could be in different cities and I was like, do you know Miguel? And I, I can't even get a chance to say Galarza because they say you're a buena. So um, listen, Andrea, tell me, um, tell me about one of your success stories, maybe with one of your uh, agencies you've worked with so far and how important relationship building is in, in, in that success. I think one of my success stories is um, we were hired by SMA, which is a, a solar inverter manufacturing company to go and swap out, uh, I believe it was close to 800 CPUs at the Veterans um, Administrative Hospital, Administration Hospital. Mm -hmm. And so we went in there to basically swap out the CPUs and we started to, you know, get to know the electricians and all the people that were there. Um, okay. During the time that I was there, my background is uh, I have an MBA in management information systems. So because of my relationship with SMA, at the time, the, the VA, they didn't, they were having issues gaining access to their system with regards to the monitoring. So through my relationship with the SM with SMA, I was able to bridge that to the VA and we were able to get their entire monitoring system set up, get them plant access themselves. And I was able to show them how to actually utilize this and, and have the ability to start monitoring some of this stuff themselves. So then basically, yes, that might be less work that they're going to be sending me, but you know, you gain the value of trust, you know, there we show up when they ask us to show up, we provide the information, we're transparent. And, you know, they're basically, you know, able to now understand their bill, where they're at, and how they're able to, um, you know, just make sure that they're getting the best for their the solar system that they've provided. So that relationship has been essential to our business for many years now. Andrea. That was a, a that was great. Again, um, folks, listen to how that contractor can trust and rely and count on Allegiant going forward. Um, I'm going to tell you many times. I have some very good firms over the years where 
people would literally call me and say, Mark, I've got this contract um, and uh, I want to, I want to deal with your bueno. Okay. Um, because contracting officers are overwhelmed right now. Uh, we have a lot of contractors actually leaving the business. And so we have some new contracting officers coming in. So where, I mean, I, I train contracting officers. I, I'm certified. I have a certification to be a contracting officer. So I, we just did a, an event with General Services, which is the largest buyer of goods and services in the world. And I just trained, we did a training for 46 of the contracting officers there on, on how to go about uh, getting your justification, your market research uh, for award. But again, swinging back to what Andrea said, um, people want to deal with people that they can trust, that they can count on, that they know that when you go to do, we have a term called closeout in contracting. And the best kind of closeout, Miguel, you can share this with me, is when you're shaking hands with the contracting officer, with the core contracting officer representative, or maybe the program manager, and they're saying, hey, great job. Listen, we've got something else coming up. Can we maybe have a meeting here and talk about you being, we bringing you in to be, I call it the solution provider, because you out there, your business, you are the best. You want to have great performance. Uh, we have something I didn't bring up, CPARS, which is another class. Contractor Performance Assessment Rating System, okay? You are rated uh, and you want to get the exceptional rating. Uh, there's a very good, satisfactory. Uh, you don't want to go below that. You always want to perform on those federal contracts. And actually, when my on the 8A, my name's on that contract. And our reputations, my word is important to me. So all of our reputations are on the line. So thank you for doing that good work out there. Um, okay, uh, Miguel, uh, we, I, went, I think we got a couple more minutes here. Um, Miguel, uh, the also just a little point, everyone needs to know the federal contracting year. The federal contracting year is October 1st to, to the end of September, okay? So we always say fourth quarter, which is actually... Uh, July, August, September in the uh, fourth is the fourth quarter. So, Miguel, to sort of close us out here, um, what does the fourth quarter mean to you? And maybe what's the best time to, if you got to take a couple days off, when to take that time off and when not to take that time off? Please share with us, Miguel. Yeah, I can't say I ever took a summer vacation. So that's not in a entrepreneurial government contractor vernacular. Your summer starts October 1st. So if you are going to take off between, I've done proposals in Hawaii because somebody decided they wanted their thing on in August. I learned really a long time ago, don't plan anything for the family until October and after. But <laughs> here's yeah. a really important point that you should all remember. You do not need to be certified to do business with the federal government. It's really important to Mark's point earlier that you start to perform, do a small little job, get a little project, bid it competitively, and then you, you'll understand, learn the process, meet the people who are making the decisions, and continue to do small jobs. And then when you are 8A, now you've got an opening and say, by the way, you don't have to compete this anymore. If you like our work, you can just sole source this to us. That's how you get inroads with contracting offers because now you not only have you done work for them, but they trust you now. And now they'll trust you with a bigger job. And so you, your business development starts way before you even become certified. Don't wait to be certified to do your marketing. Do your marketing before you get certified. Yeah. Let me, let me just uh, give you one more piece. I, I tell you what, this having this event today is, is what the really cool thing is for me in this job. I mean, when I come to work every day it's, as a public servant, I mean, the, the thing that really jazzes me is when my companies get contracts. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's just uh, the things that came to that, the collaboration, it's like synergy. 
you know, it's just so cool. So, um, and also just to highlight on one thing on the fourth quarter, I, I'm telling you, this is information out of Washington, D.C. The majority of contracts in the 8A program came out in the fourth quarter of 2022 fiscal year, folks. Okay. So listen, we also call it harvest time. Um, and so that's why I, uh, my job also involves a lot of paperwork. So I try to get all my paperwork and that's what I'm doing now too, so that I know, I mean, just, I think July, July starts Saturday here going into the fourth quarter. I want to have all my other paperwork and responsibilities and goals done so I can really be available for my companies to help advocate with my contracting officers to get contracts for my firms and also assist you with, if there's any issues. So listen, um, hey, I want to, um, I, I think we're on the time here, Diego. So I want to maybe give it back to you or, or Mary Jo so everyone can have a, a talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Folks, if you could all please help me with showing your appreciation um, and your love to all of our amazing speakers today, Mark McComas, Mary Jo, Andrea Vigil, and Mr. Miguel Galarza. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules um, to share this knowledge and this critical information, these golden nuggets, right, that don't get um, taught to us, right, as we're growing and as we're scaling our companies. And so this information is really critical. Um, so I hope that you all took some time to take some notes. Um, as a reminder, we will follow up after this session concludes with all of the resources that we shared in this session, the recording, the slide deck. Um, everything that you all will need in regards to SBA 8A certification, as well as other programming, that will be sent over to you all after this session is over. Um, and so, folks, I want to just say thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today. I want to just do a quick plug here before we wrap up um, with regards to our business scaling program and the LBAN business scaling program that we run at Stanford Graduate School of Business. We are accepting applications for the upcoming cohort, which will run from September 13th through November 18th, in-person dates taking place September 15th through the 17th, and then that last day, November 18th. If you are potentially interested in joining this program, feel free to reach out. I'm going to go ahead and include my email here um, so that you have that available. My email is diego at lband.us. I'm happy to answer any questions, any clarifications that you have. Um, Andrea and Mark uh, excuse me, Miguel, we're both alumni of the program as well, and they can also speak on their experience as well if you have any questions in regards to understanding the entrepreneurial experience. Um, and so, yeah, if you are all interested in, in joining that program, please reach out to me. If you know of anybody within your network that would be interested in this program, please share the opportunity with them as well. Um, and with that, I want to close us off here and say thank you so much. Thank you to our speakers, and I hope you all have a great rest of your Wednesday. We will see you for the next one. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.